If you are tired of getting overwhelmed with information or losing momentum on your personal and professional efforts, then linking your thinking might be your missing piece to the puzzle. Today we will cover how and why you should link your thinking. You will learn how to do it and why it works. You will hopefully see and feel how your own Ideaverse can grow over time. If a healthy Ideaverse is a well-connected thinking environment, guess what linking notes together will help you create? An Ideaverse. To get there, we are going to re-enter Ideaverse for Obsidian, which is the world's most downloaded starter kit for linked notes. Now this time, as we step into the Ideaverse, we are going to act like a child stepping into a sandbox. We are going to be curious, we're going to be open to wonder, and we are going to be ready to play. That's how you will truly unlock the power of linking your thinking. You ready? Okay, let's go. All right, we are now inside the Ideaverse. At its simplest level, Ideaverse for Obsidian is just a folder with 250 files. But those 250 files, let's just call them notes, they point to each other over 1,000 times. Let's call each one of those points a link. So what we have here are 250 notes that are linked 1,000 times. And once you get to that many links, your ideas start to behave like a living, breathing ecosystem, like a forest, a planet, or even a universe. That's why it's called an Ideaverse. Now let's do the thing. What's the thing? Making links. So let's jump into any old note, or let's create a note actually. So I'm going to just go here, hit the plus icon, and then create a new file. Now let's, uh, for now, just call it just start. So this is the title name. I'm going to hit tab. Now I can start typing. Here's what I'd like you to do. Hit left bracket twice, bracket, bracket. What that does is basically open up endless portals across the Ideaverse that you can hyper jump to. That's right, pretend you're a space pilot and the Ideaverse is yours to navigate. The only limits are your imagination. But if you want another limit, just start typing anything. Let's type the word start. What do we notice? There's this note called start here. So let's go ahead and click that. And we have just created a link. Now I'm going to hold down command or control on Windows as I click on this link. It opens into a new tab that way. And I want you to notice that below the note there are linked mentions. And what is pointing to this note? Aha, uh -huh, it's just start, the note that we just created. Okay, now let's jump back to just start. I kind of want a stronger title. By the way, did you know you're allowed to change what you title your notes? It's actually an amazing form of sense making. And in tools like Obsidian, every connected note will update the link. Let me show you what I mean. So here we have just start. Now I'll go back to the note called start here and you see this linked mention. Now when I go to just start, Let's give it a stronger title. How about something like a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. Cool. And now I know that's by uh, Lao Tzu. So I'm just going to put that there for now. Uh, and then we'll have that that I can come to later. Let's jump back into the note start here and see what happens. Okay, cool. So now in the linked mentions, notice it auto magically updates. So when you have links that are connected all over the place, if you change a note title, those changes percolate and you don't even have to do anything. This is part of the moment in 2020 when link thinking broke the sound barrier. We went from Mach 0.9 to Mach 1 and boom, this is an amazing superpower. I can't wait for you to experience it. Okay, let's go back to a journey of a thousand miles starts with a single step. This is a great note. And maybe the notion of all of those steps make me think of a connection. When something is repeated a bunch, what does it become? That's right, a habit. Okay, so let's start typing. So I'm going to hit, what am I going to hit? Left bracket, left bracket, or just bracket, bracket. And I'm going to limit our search this time by typing habit. And immediately you can see all these hyper-targeted results. The one that I'd like to actually link to is habits map. Isn't that great? Now we have a link, an always available portal to another area in the Ideaverse. Or in plain speak, we have a file. In that file, we created a link to another file. 
That's cool by itself. Yay, we can easily link notes. But it's what that does that make people fall in love with linking. Basically, you think better, learn faster, and remember more. Any of those benefits would be worth it. But all three, this is really unfair. By linking your thinking, you are habitualizing yourself to think more critically, more creatively, and connectively. Not to mention, you will generate more unique thoughts than you ever have before. How might these superpowers be useful to you? My goodness, let me count the ways. Now, one neat thing about link notes is a practice that I advocated for in the spring of 2020, where you add a link to the top of a note. If you can believe it today, this super common sense practice was initially met with like a lot of pushback from a very dogmatic part of this Zettelkasten community. Zettelkasten is German for slip box, and it essentially is all about atomic notes. The problem with all these tiny notes is that you get lost in a forest of them. This is why in the next lesson we're going to cover maps of content, which is the solution to the mental squeeze point when you get overwhelmed by too much information. All we need to do is make a map. We throw links on that map and life feels pretty great. Now we can solve that problem, now we can make those insights, and now we can return to something when we're ready for it. But let's go back to the value of having a link at the top of the note. Not only does it help you navigate, but it helps you make sense of things. Let's do an example. I'm now going to jump into that habits map note. And you'll notice at the top there's a related note called the three phases of maps of content, or MOCs. But we're not going to go there right now. Instead, I'm just going to look around at this awesome map that I developed. It might not mean a lot to you, but it means everything to me because I used this note to make sense of a topic. This topic happened to be about habits. A topic like habits connects to all sorts of other topics that are interrelated in a really interesting way. For now, let's just jump into defining a habit. We can look through all this and this is great, isn't it? Now we might just dive into it and start exploring. So if I'm in this note for whatever reason, I might decide to then jump into, let's say, feedback loop. Okay, so now I'm in feedback loop, life's going well, and then I say, well, it is related how habits, okay, habits carry a ton of hidden inertia. I'm having a great time, but let's say for whatever reason, my mind feels like I could use a bit more structure. Like I hopped from note to note to note, great. I maybe like tweaked a little bit of notes here and there, I made some insights, but I'm feeling like a little overwhelmed and I want some structure. Basically, I want to be able to zoom out. So here's what we can do with that top link that I was talking about. At the top of this note, you'll see it goes up to the habits map. So all these kind of micro notes are likely going to be connected to a macro note. So I go back to the habits map. Now, without even moving my cursor, notice that it's already hovering over another link. This time it's not necessarily up, but it's related. So now I can just go ahead and click on the three phases of MOCs. And again, if I hit, without even moving my mouse, if I click again, it'll go to the MOCs overview. What if I click it again? Ideaverse map, what if I click it again? Well, then it's going to go to home. Whoa, what just happened? We're flying across the Ideaverse as fast as we can click. And many, but not all roads will lead you home. This is a knowledge network. And each year, imagine having this, your idea verse becomes more valuable to you. It's as much a secret weapon in self-knowledge as it is in career advancement. And I know because I've used it for both several times, but I won't bore you with those details right now. Instead, let's hop back a little bit because I just wanna talk about these metadata values. So here, if we look at MOC's overview, which we'll overview tomorrow, let me go ahead and add a missing related link that I think would make a lot of sense here. How about the three, oh, there it is, the three phases of maps of content. So let's look at this, what is happening? Because I can't go over all this stuff at the top of these notes, but I should at least give you some context so you know what's happening. This stuff is usually called metadata. It's data about the note that you're looking at. Now in Obsidian, this metadata can be easily managed in this section called properties. There are endless bits of data that you might want to track. Let's imagine that you're into movies. Maybe you want to create your own IMDB database and you want to have some category called year. And then you can say the year that that movie came out was 1990. And then after a while, you can have all those movies grouped together in a really interesting way. Oh wait, 
Have we shown this already? So quickly I can open up sources map and we can see what we did with books, how they're categorized by year. What does that look like? Let's click into the Count of Monte Cristo. Whoa, look at that, year 1984. And what's above it? Up and related. That's what we were just talking about. So let's go back to MOC's overview and just finish off this conversation on metadata. Here's a quick word of caution. Before I share my basic strategy, don't overdo it. Don't feel obligated to add a bunch of stuff here. Don't spend more time in properties than you do in the content itself. So here's my simple recommendation. For almost every note, you want something that is bound by relatedness and something that is bound by time. That is, if you want to greatly improve the odds of you being able to find this note when you want to find it, and if you want to find it in context to all the other important notes, and if you want to improve your comprehension in the process. Okay, here's my mnemonic for metadata. Related and created. Have one of each. So in this case, we have two relationships, one that points up and then one that is just generally related, and then we have a created date. Now, if it's a movie, I might put year instead. Those are going to be some nuances that we'll cover elsewhere. We might cover that in the workshop, those sort of places. But essentially, you want related and created. So if we look at this note, we can see we have a related and created. And if I feel like I don't actually need that area, go ahead and delete it. You can do that. At the end of the day, if you want to remember this for the reasons we just talked about, related and created. That's the only metadata you need. Everything else is gravy on top when you really get into your specific use cases. And then that's cool too. Now for a deeper dive as to why this works, just remember STIR. STIR, S-T-I-R, stands for Space, Time, Importance, and Relatedness. And you can go ahead and explore it further by opening a note called Use STIR to Remember More. And you can read about it all here, and it's pretty cool. But that's enough metadata for now. Can you start to see why so many people get excited about linking their thinking? I navigated around my notes effortlessly. If I wanted to write an article in Habits, I was already off to a good start and all my related material was already a click away. But even if I never write a single article to the outside world, my work here has changed my inner world as it helps me make better sense of all the world around me. And you can have all this power for yourself. What's cool is that when I leave this idea verse behind, I take this idea verse with me. How profound is that? The links that I make in the digital idea verse directly affect the neuronal links in my inner idea verse, in my mind. And this fascinating interplay between the technological and the biological connections has a really neat result. It subtly flavors every future decision, every future choice and improves the chances that it will be better, richer, and a more fulfilling outcome. You simply must start linking your thinking. It's both practical and priceless. Now in the final lesson for this introduction to the idea verse, you will learn two major parts of linking your thinking. The first is how to have quality stuff to link to in the first place. That's where we cover note making instead of note taking. And the second is how to overcome these mental squeeze points that we have so we can supercharge our thinking. That's where we use maps of content. So when you're ready, click here to jump to the next session and we'll see you in the next one.